Well, the art club is for students that are interested in arts and crafts. Um, our dues are $5 a year. We meet about two or three times a month after school for about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, we mainly work on arts and crafts type projects. Uh, you don't have to be taking art to be a member of the art club, but you should have an interest in art and at least some skills. Um, some of the activities we do are, we are getting ready just this year for the Cedar Bluff Festival. We do that every year. We have an art show and we do face painting. Uh, we also do some face painting at football games. And then we have several service projects where we do face painting. Um, we do face painting for Special Olympics, the Dare Jamboree, and usually the uh, SOL Fun Day down at Cedar Bluff Elementary. And oh, we usually have a good time at our meetings, do a little gossiping and snacking while we work on our arts and crafts. So come out and join us. CADRE stands for Commonwealth Alliance of Drug Resistance Education. We have meetings about once a month. They provide breakfast because we leave pretty early, not before school starts though. So we'll get to school, you know, do your regular thing, go to your locker, put your stuff away, and then at 8.30 we usually load the bus to leave. Um, you get out of school almost all day. We come back around 2 or 2.15. We have lots of different activities that we do. We have Red Ribbon Week, which is a week where we give out pencils and have ribbons that are red. <laughs> and we do different things interacting within our school as well as the elementary schools we go and visit. And this is like telling them that drugs are bad. It explains to the elementary schools, the students, and that we should wear these to represent that we know this. Shop of the Cop we raise money for, and around Christmas we go to Magic Mart in um, Richlands and we are with cops and kids who don't have enough money to afford different toys, so we buy them toys. We also have a lunch buddy program, which we go to the elementary school during our lunch every Friday. And we sit with our lunch buddy, and usually it's someone that needs a friend or doesn't have anyone to really talk to. And then we also, our biggest event is the Dare Jamboree, in which we go to Tazewell, and we have it on their football field. And um, the fifth graders of every elementary school in the county come, and they have water balloons and different activities, face painting. It's a lot of fun, and they provide lunch for you also. So if you're interested in this club, the dues are $10. See Ms. Ritchie in room 112, or one of her cadre students if she's out because of her baby. <laughs> Thank you. Let me just say, I'm in my second year of DECA, and it is by far one of the funnest clubs to be in. Uh, I mean, going into my second year, uh, last year I went to the state competition and everything like that, and um, I mean, just the friends and stuff that you make with DECA, it, it's so much fun, and you learn so much, especially when it comes to just business and working with people in the business place. And I know, especially if you're going to go to apply for a job or something like that, they love to see that you're involved with DECA or anything business oriented. And that's why it's really important to get into marketing classes, which is one of the things you have to have in order to join DECA, and along with the $30 DECA dues, which also, it's really not that bad because it pays for your admittance into the district and uh, the Virginia uh, state competitions and everything like that. But overall, it's just a really great opportunity to be able to be a part of DECA and anything DECA oriented. FBLA stands for Future Business Leaders of America. It's just one of the many clubs here at Rich Stands High School that I am one of the advisors on along with Mr. Sparks. This club deals with uh, taking, doing competitions against the New River District, against other schools in the New River Districts. We have a fall workshop that will be held at Bluefield College on October the 5th, 2012, whereas we get to meet all of the new district presidents and vice presidents and officers. In the spring, we do a national competition or a statewide competition, which, uh, which allows uh, the, petition, the participants to go to Reston, Virginia, 
to compete to go to nationals, which will be held in Anaheim, California, uh, which we do very well in. We've had a national person to compete for the last three years in Kevin Cabaria, and we hope to have one this year. Uh, FCCLA is the Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America, and we have both state and national conventions every year. This year our national convention is going to be in Orlando, but every year our state convention is in Virginia Beach. And if you do a star event with Miss Force class, you get to go to Virginia Beach with us for a trip. It's a lot of fun. We leave on Thursday and we don't get back to a really late Sunday night. It's in April this year. I think it's April 12th is when we leave. Um, we have a national officer, Justin Hess, and that's actually a really big deal. It's really hard to be a national officer. It takes a lot of work. And you have to be in one of Ms. Goforce classes to be in FCCLA. Our dues are $12, and you can participate on the local level very easily. We do a lot of community service projects, and we help out around town a lot. We're going to do a traffic stop one day for our stop, the, with our fax project. We have stop the violence projects against bullying, and there are many other things we do. Hi, I am Taylor Matney, a junior at RHS. I have been an active member of the Richlands FFA chapter for three years. I am currently running for the office of vice president of our chapter and want to invite you to join our exciting club. The FFA organization promotes agriculture and leadership through hands-on experience. FFA prepares students for life after high school, whether that be college or in a career field. Students have the unique opportunity to travel to state conventions in Virginia and meet other FFA members, as well as competing in exciting contests, such as stockmen's and livestock judging, forestry, ag mechanics, and horse judging. Also, each year we assist the Virginia Cooperative Extension and local soil and water conservation youth field days with our county elementary schools. Each year we have an annual softball tournament with the Tazewell FFA chapter and we also hold a banquet toward the end of our school year to award our FFA club members. For more information, contact our advisors, Mr. Kip Kirby and Mr. Johnson. Any agriculture student is welcome regardless of their agriculture experience and we hope you will join us. Good morning, the Richlands High School YMCA Club, or hi -Y, is a Virginia affiliate of the Virginia YMCA. We are a service-based club. We do lots and lots of community service. The YMCA also uh, wants us to focus upon leadership skills. We will be having a leadership program this year at Richlands High School. We, some of the service projects that we do, Operation Christmas Child. Also, we do the Teen Leadership Conference, which is an eighth grade debate conference. We do the Cumberland Mountain Easter Egg Hunt for special needs adults over at Cumberland Mountain. Dues this year are $25. This includes a t-shirt and your dues toward the Virginia YMCA. Hawa is a great club to join. Uh, in previous years we are one of three clubs that has actually won the ACE Award. This is the highest honor that a club can receive from the Virginia YMCA and less than 5% of the clubs in the nation actually receive this award and we've received it for the last two years. Thank you. Um, well, Miss Simmons is over it. Uh, we started last year, it was our first year, and it was actually a lot of fun. Um, I don't know, like we're really not too sure what we're still doing. We're still like finding our part as being a club, but it's a lot of fun when um, during the spring fling and the Halloween dance, we would always do the cupcake walks. Lots of fun, you get to listen to music and win free cupcakes. So, I mean, if you like cupcakes, this is definitely the club to join. And uh, I think Miss Simmons was uh, hoping to go on a lot of trips this year. And I think that's it. All right, the Key Club is a community service club, and it is sponsored by Beth Smith, who is a teacher here at Richlands High School. Um, we do many different projects through the club. We do a luminary service, we go to the food pantry, we also go to the nursing home occasionally, and this year Miss Smith has a few other projects that she wants to do, which is the National Key Club Week, and she also wants to do something with the Big Help, which is the Nickelodeon Worldwide Day of Play. And the major thing that the Key Club does is the Special Needs uh, Olympics, which is one day throughout the whole year, 500 special needs kids 
come here at the high school and they do many activities such as water balloon slingshots and they do hula hoops and just many different activities. The SCA is a student council association. We do many programs throughout the year to encourage community involvement with our students as well as fundraisers to support our scholarship program that we give out at the end of each school year. Um, we sponsor the food drive in the fall. We sponsor the Pennies for Patients, which um, supports the Cancer, Leukemia, and Lymphoma Society. We visit Mayfair and Golden Age nursing homes multiple times a year. Um, in addition to that, we also sponsor the Marsh Blood Drive each spring and each fall. And we try to do our best to be good citizens and to incorporate citizenship into the student environment. Uh, the science fair is something that we do here at RHS and Ms. Stillwell and I are the sponsors and um, it's just a lot of fun. You learn about scientific method, you make a display board with a project, you get to come up with any project you want. You can work individually or in teams. Here at Richlands we do our science fair in the library and it's going to be on January 10th and then we have the county science fair competition on February 1st and that's at Southwest Virginia Community College and you can win prizes, certificates, money, sometimes there's even computers involved. Then we go to the Regional Science Fair in Radford and that is gonna be in March and then there's also state competition. So we just encourage everybody that has uh, any interest in science to please join us and just come and ask us if they have any questions. T2H is a school science club. It's sponsored by Ms. Stillwell and Ms. Addison and it focuses on a lot of community action, uh, raising awareness on pollution, uh, global warming is a major issue uh, coming up, and we sponsor Earth Week, which is coming up next semester, and you know we'll do activities to commemorate that. We always have a float in the homecoming parade, and we've won two out of the last three years for that, and uh, we're certainly gonna have one this year, and we will have a community cleanup day. It's just a really great program to be involved in. Class dues are normally about $12. They have been in years past, but you'll have to see Miss Stillwell or Miss Addison to find out for sure. Motorcycle Club is all about motorcycle safety, and the reason we started the club was because we had three students here at Richlands High School that were killed in motorcycle accidents within six months. And so Major and I really enjoy the sport and uh, so what we wanted to do was introduce students to motorcycles in a safe way and teach them to be safe. And that's the point of the club. Well, hello, I'm Major Vandeven, Dale Vandeven, and I'm one of the sponsors of Rich Lance High School Motorcycle Awareness Club. Now, we actually have four sponsors. It's myself, Master Sergeant Thayer, um, Mr. Barnett, and Coach Blevins. And today, I'm gonna show you how to check out a front tire. Actually this is Jose's bike and he's gonna come on in here and what we're gonna do is go over what he needs to know to make sure that his bike's ready to be ridden. So come on in Jose. All right. Okay so the first thing we're gonna do is check tire pressure and that's a pretty simple straightforward operation. All we're gonna do is take the valve stem cap off and we need to look inside the valve stem cap to see if there's a little rubber o-ring because believe it or not those Schrader valves leak a lot, and this little O-ring will keep the air in the tire for you. And you have one, so that's good. Then the next thing we do is just make sure we get a good seal with the tire gauge onto the tire. And we get a reading, and yours is a little bit low, so I'm sure you'll take care of that shortly. All right. All right. Then the next thing we want to check is the overall wear of the tire. Now the easiest way to do that is to look on the side of the tire and you're going to be able to find a little black diamond. All right, and this tire's got one right here. And if you go in from that little black diamond and go to the center of the tire, you're going to find a built up, a built up section. It's probably real hard to see on camera. But right here, there's a little build up of rubber. All right, and that's the manufacturer's wear indicator. So when that becomes flush, when that's even with the rest of the tire, the tire's dead. Okay, the tire needs to be replaced. All right, now the next thing that we can check is exactly how old is this tire? Because you lose tires two ways. You can lose them because you wore it out, 
or it can age out because they don't last forever. They don't have a shelf life of infinity. And the easiest way to find out, or the only way that I know to find out, is on the tire sidewall, you'll find the letters DOT, which mean Department of Transportation. And then you come in from that until you get to the last set of numbers. Well, the last set of numbers is the actual build date of the tire. So this tire was manufactured on the 15th week of 2011. So this is a relatively young tire chronologically, but wear-wise, she's about done. All right. So what did we check? We checked tire pressure, we checked tire wear, we checked the age of the tire. Now let's take one real quick look and we'll see how is the tire wearing? Is it wearing smoothly and evenly, which means you're getting max use out of it, or is it wearing in an unusual pattern? Because to be honest, yours is wearing a little unusually. Okay, and if you look, you've actually got more groove in the center. These are called sipes, by the way. You've got more groove in the center of the tire remaining than you do on the sides. All right, well, that combined with the fact that if you run your hand over the tire, your tire isn't perfectly, it isn't an even curve all the way around. You can feel bumps on yours. So what's happened is your tire probably was run a little underinflated and the sides will wear prematurely and the tire won't wear in a smooth pattern, which is what you want. Because this leads to vibration, vibration leads to wheel shimmy, wheel shimmy leads to you not making the corner. All, right. All of which is a bad thing. Okay, any questions? No, sir. Thank We're you. good? Okay, you're right. So. Well, this is just one of the things that we cover in Motorcycle Awareness Club, and it's, you know, this is pretty simple and straightforward. And there's lots and lots of other things that we cover, and we don't just do street bikes. We do street bikes and dirt bikes. We do a lot of show and tell. We bring in lots of equipment and make sure you understand what you can do to try to keep yourself, you know, in one piece when you play with these things. I started 45 years ago, so you can do this for a long time, but you got to use a little bit of sense.